Hey, this is Dan and Ryan. Puts ponds and gardens. We're here in lovely Fraser, Michigan, and we are going to build a 13 by 15 pond. The homeowner had just bought this house here in Fraser. He's had a pond in the past, he's kept fish in the past, and he wants this to be his forever home. So we're going to make him a forever pond. So we're going to do approximately 15 feet across this way, 13 feet that way two foot depth pond. We're gonna have an Aquascape Signature Series skimmer. We're gonna do a fish cave right in through here, water lily shelf right in through this side, and then the bio falls again. My catchphrase, it'll twist and turn and come down into the pond. Watch how this magic unfolds as we get started. <laughs> So one of the first things that we do when we're starting a pond is we establish water level. It's very important. So we need to know how deep to actually put our skimmer because the, the skimmer actually dictates the water level in a pond. So we like to take uh, the patio. We'll take a measurement on the patio. We like to bring the water level at least three inches down from that patio. And since this is about 10 feet away from the patio, the grade starts sloping away a little bit. So we take a measurement here, we zero out our zip level, and then we take a measurement over there and we start carving everything out. I'm gonna get some time-lapse video going and you can see just how fast this process is. Alright, so before I started digging, I talked to the homeowner and he said, you know what, if you can go a little bigger, go a little bigger. So we went approximately 18 feet across this way and approximately 15 feet this way. So we're going to call this a 15 by 18 by a two foot depth ecosystem pond. We've got a shelf over here. We've got a fish cave in the middle. We have another shelf over here. Now we're going to minimize these two shelves here just a little bit. We're going to pu push them back just a little bit. We've got a water lily shelf here at 18 inches in depth, two foot depth in pond. No shovel work has been done. So we've got two foot here, but we're going to, we're going to go ahead and scrape everything by hand and flat shovels and cut away any of the roots. So that way they're not going to um, puncture the liner whatsoever. We've got our hole for our skimmer dug. We've got a nice gradual mound of soils up in here. Now, some people build their ponds, everybody builds a little differently, but because the soils come all the way back here, that doesn't mean I have to set my biofalls way back here. And it doesn't mean that I need to set my biofalls at this grade and then put boulders just to create, you know, a more dramatic 
waterfall that's going to be uh, three foot off the exit the grade that I set what I want to do is I'm going to sink that biofalls till about only that much sticks out then I'm going to carve out the front of this twist and turn it so that way it's more natural I don't want a waterfall that's you know a hillside out here or a volcano as some may call it I want something that looks like it can blend in looks natural plantings can kind of adapt to them I don't want this to become people show up here maybe it has a housewarming party because this is a, a pond uh, in his new house and he has a, a housewarming party I want people to think oh my god has this always been here this is great that's our goal when we're creating these these features in people's backyards you saw the wood line back there you saw the nice shade canopy tree maple that this pond is going to be under we want this to blend in as much as possible we don't want this to look like it's an afterthought we want it to blend into the surroundings and not look like it's just something that was it plopped in out of the sky our edge treatment around the pond we don't want the boulder sticking up we want the water level to be up as high as possible so that way when we're done and these waterfalls get turned on and the homeowner gets all excited nothing more rewarding than that so I'm gonna call it a day today I'm gonna head back over to the project that the guys are working on and they're trimming up some liner and they're doing some detail work so I'm gonna go give them a hand and we'll be back over here tomorrow all right this day two and I didn't want to bore you with a lot of time lapse I was out here by myself this morning uh, shaping up the pond and everything and my ADD was off the charts so I didn't want it you guys to sit there and watch me and poke fun of me of he's starting over here and he's working over on this then he switched and went to this to this to that uh, my wife can contest to that that I'm pretty pretty bad at ADHD it's um, it's a little crazy see a squirrel boom anyways that's how my videos are so you guys got to deal with it anywho let me turn the camera around I'll show you what I got completed the guys uh, showed up so they're gonna they're setting the biofalls now and uh, let me show you what got done all right so the pond is at a two foot depth the skimmers in I ran the piping this morning I've got a water lily shelf over here on this side I've got a shelf on each side of my fish cave that's gonna be in right through here and then I've got a shelf on the other side so when the water comes down won't do that deep plunge we've got plenty of room here started out as a 13 by 15 pond and now it's 21 feet across this way 18 feet across this way we've got a, tr a stream that twists turns the guys are actually setting the biofalls we're gonna have a drop coming out of there about that big Brian is playing with his wood in the corner here so that's a nice piece of driftwood yeah. um, I'm gonna try to incorporate that somehow into the system this is what the uh, homeowner left on site here previous homeowner uh, there's not, another nice log right here let's see if we can't uh, we'll use something like that wow look at that one that one's got a hole in it that's pretty cool that one would be kind of neat in the stream and have water coming out of it what you want to look at if you're going to be adding stuff like this to a stream see how that's really smooth it's been weathered um, you, you, you are taking a chance no matter what um, of getting tannins in your stream or I'm sorry tannins in your water um, it turns the water tea colored and then you've got to use activated carbon or do multiple water changes to get that out of there especially you know stumps like this that are just old rotted wood it's not driftwood not anything like this piece over here where it's it's smooth this probably came right out of uh, next to a lake looks like a piece of cedar um, someone had harvested it out of a lake or a stream um, that one's been weathered not a lot of chances we can actually have this part down in the water and not get any uh, tannins leaching into the into the water column itself it's about 95 here and for Michigan you know what that's kind of hot for us when Javara starts doing his little dance we know it's time 
All right, we'll catch you guys tomorrow. We got boulder deliveries. We got gravel deliveries. We're gonna go and pick up the liner in the morning. We're gonna make some more magic. Wanted to show you something that I unearthed um, while I was digging. This is actually the sleeve. If you're from, from the Detroit area, this is Borden's milk. This is the outside sleeve of a milk carton. Grade A homogenized vitamin D milk. That's the real stuff. I mean, that's thick. If you remember back in the day, Borden's, um, you know, they've been around since uh, 1857. If you've been around the Detroit area for as long as I have, uh, 55 years, um, you know, having Borden's milk being delivered right to your home in your milk chute, you know, there's nothing better. Having a paper route for so many years, uh, we had Twin Pines Dairy. Um, they would you know, delivered down the street, but we'd also have a Borden's um, milk truck come by and he would deliver milk to the house and to the neighbors and things like that too. So I'm, I'm dating myself, but if, if you're from the area, you know, it's just a little bit of nostalgia. It, it's, it's, uh, it's been here for a long, long time. You know, um, seeing Elsie the cow on that milk container, uh, ice cream container, they do make a lot of different dairy products. I just thought it was kind of fun. Uh, Seeing something like that well preserved underneath the uh, underneath the soils, just something kind of neat to look at. All right, we're here on day number four of our project here in Fraser, Michigan, and of course the rain did kind of hold us off. It dampened the spirits. Um, productivity was way down because of the rain. In fact, I was driving home. I had to have my hazards on because I couldn't even see 10, 15 feet in front of me. Trees were down in the area. Um, you know, it wasn't fun. But we're back here today and it's a nice sunshiny day. Let me show you the progress that we got done yesterday, even though the rain was here. We're on our last 10% and as you know, the last 10% is the first 10% that the customer does see and view their pond. So um, let me turn it around and I'll show you what we got going on. All right, so the pond is still filling up right now and Guys are doing the edge work. Zach and uh, Javaris are working on that. This side, I think they did a beautiful job on this side. Looks great. Um, we're just finishing up this side over here. Brian is working on uh, the waterfalls. I love how he's got this uh, purple, uh, purple? No, this is uh, pink and like blue green stone here. It's got a nice fractured side to it. I have water rushing through there. Um, the guys ended up incorporating an, a stump over here. Now that's a weathered piece of driftwood and it is cedar so it's not going to leach any tannins into the water. He squeezed down the middle stream up here. Let me go over there and I'll show you a little bit more of a close up. So he's got these two character boulders on each side but made about an 8 inch wide waterfall in the center. That's going to force more water right towards the center and have a rush of water there. Now the top one, that's kind of what we call maybe a one and done stone. He's got his character stone set. You can see underneath this, he's got a couple um, just filler stones to prop that up. We'll backfill with some gravel, add some foam, get the water rush right through there. Maybe even add a couple stones inside the stream just to give the water a little bit more movement. Plus it reduces the depth of a stream. The, the finches, the robins, they love being, uh, being able to splash and take a bath in there. We're going to work on this last 10%, get this thing fired up today. Here's the finished product. Water's still dirty right now. It's going to clear up in a couple days. I think the homeowner's really going to be surprised when he comes home from work today. 
Um, he has not seen this yet, so um, he has called me to ask me what time we'd be done today. And I said, we'll probably be gone before you, uh, before you do get home. And he's thinking about actually building another pond. He wants to dedicate this one to a true koi pond and possibly do one over here or in another location um, close by in the backyard here for maybe maybe a recreational pond maybe he wants to swim in it maybe he's looking to do just some goldfish or something in it but let us know what you think about this one get over so you can see the waterfalls check those out So we really appreciate you watching our video. Leave us some comments. Let us know what you think. And we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Make it a great day.